Yo, what is going on everybody? Welcome back to Football Manager 2019 and today I would like you to go on a journey through your imagination with me. Picture this, picture the scenario. It's the end of the January transfer window. It's deadline day, you have about three hours left. You're third in the league. You're not, qu you know you're not quite good enough to catch the top two teams as you are. You have, let's say, £30 million available. And there are two players that you can get. They are both equally as good as each other. One is a goalkeeper, one is a striker. Your current goalkeeper and striker are just as good as each other as well. You can only upgrade one position. They both cost £30 million. Who should you buy? Which one of those two positions is going to give you the greatest output single-handedly to improve your season? That is what today is all about. That age-old question will finally be answered once and for all, for good, indisputably so, today. Alright, so here's how it is going to work. The kind of setup for this, I always say I made two players, one a goalkeeper, one a striker, made them as good as I possibly can and made them equally as good, hopefully. You'll agree with the way it has come out. I then had to think about, objectively, in my opinion, what is the best place to put them where I can measure their impact, where there is as little chance for other factors to affect it as possible. So clubs were out because of transfers and manager changes. That There's way too much variation there. I don't just want to plonk them in the same game and see what happened. It had to be the same team with the same variables, the same scenarios. And then I had to think about a team where the really realistically the only player that could possibly change the fortunes of the team are the ones I'm putting in, the goalkeeper, the striker, because the rest of the team is incapable. And so at that point, there really was only one answer. San Marino. So in this case, the file I have up right now, it is the perfect goalkeeper. That is here, he is San Marini's on the other one. Perfect striker is his name. Also plays for San Marino. So the aim here, the plan here, is to sim five years and see how the results... So we're going to go by results. We're going to go by player performance. And if there is kind of a tie, if I'm not sure then world ranking will come into it. So they start at 202 in the world. Obviously not very good. Their players are terrible, except for one. Mr. Perfect Goalkeeper. So what I did, in the editor, I made it all 20s here. It obviously decided it didn't want to do that. So that's fine. There's going to be some fluctuation with what FM decides to do with the ratings. There's very little I can do about that. But I looked at them both, they still, basically they're the best players, certainly on the team, probably in the world. And I would genuinely believe, if not close to it, the best was well-rounded anyway. So this is perfect goalkeeper then, he's 16, he's pretty much across the board, he's rushing at his 20, 10, so he punches, put a tag zone to punch everything so he can do it when he feels like it, and a 1 eccentricity. In other words, he won't be a Fabian Bartas style goalkeeper and just screw up. So this is him, he's six foot seven. he's a giant, so he can reach the corners nice and easily. 91 kilos, model citizen personality, either footed. They're essentially, if I could make a goalkeeper, it would be this one. He's 30 years old, the striker is also 30 years old. Part of the experiment here, because I didn't really notice this till later on, I made them 30, but I kind of like it. Because it also means that after five years, your striker's going to be 35, his physicals are going down. Is going to be affected. Is the striker a better long-term investment because of that? Or is the goalkeeper? Because I know most people, and reluctantly as a goalkeeper myself, I am included in this, feel like the striker is probably going to be better because they're the ones that score goals, right? But as a goalkeeper, I know that I can personally be responsible for getting points for my team. The door just opened by itself. That is incredibly strange. I know I can win points for my team by myself. 
I also know, just as frequently, if not more frequently in my case, I can lose points for my team by myself. So the goalkeeper has that ability. It doesn't really matter what's in front of them. They can make plays alone. The striker kind of needs a supporting cast to get on the ball. San Marino are not going to go forward that much. The striker isn't going to have that many opportunities to score. He's going to take a good number of them. He's a very good player. I'll put his stats up on the screen for a little bit here so you can take a look at them. They're very similar, like I say. He's not going to have a ton of chances, but he is capable of scoring them. So it's going to be very interesting. Is bulking up the defense a little bit. See, I don't know if that's going to help them win games. Because they're also not going to score that much without a striker. But with perfect striker in there, they're going to concede more. So I am very interested to see this. I feel like, and correct me if you think I'm wrong, but I think this is the best way to determine the impact of one player. Put them on a terrible team and see how the fortunes change. I'm not, I was going to simulate just a play in San Marino five years. I didn't because, you know, spoiler alert, they're terrible, right? I checked up on it on my other saves. They haven't won any games. They picked up a draw a couple times maybe, but that's it. So they're terrible. Just accept that, move on. We're going to jump in. We'll look at the goalkeeper first because we have him here. And we will see exactly where San Marino stand. All right, welcome back. We are going to jump in to the goalkeeper and see exactly what has happened. So San Marino, can I spell? Yes, I can. San Marino. Let's see where we're at. 179th. So world ranking-wise, they have gone up. Perfect goalkeepers at Manchester City. So that's good to know. So they've gone from 202nd in the world to 179th. It's not really much of a jump, is it? But it's something. So let's look at the player first, see how he's doing. So he has had his physical of health up quite well, to be honest. 50 caps in five years. So he's obviously, I think, played every single game. These Man City stats are pretty good, actually. Um, so, yeah, his stats haven't really changed that much. He's gone up a couple, he's gone down a couple. Yeah, so he's still just as good as he was when we left him five years ago. So he's, like I say, playing for Manchester City now. It's been a solid part for them. Let's see. Look at those ratings. That, for a goalkeeper, is quite incredible on Football Manager, for those that maybe aren't quite fully aware. So let's go and just check his ratings as we go here. So first season, international, 10 games, 12 conceded. That two clean sheets, that's not bad. 7.71. So he's clearly facing plenty of shots. I, wonder, I wish I could have like saves on this one. So I could see exactly. Can I? No, I don't think I can. That oh, would have been so good. Because he would have made a ton of saves if he's only conceded 12 times, going to 7.71. Season after, 10 games, 16 conceded. It wasn't quite as good. Still two clean sheets, two out of the matches. Uh, 10 games, 13, three clean sheets. Okay, so it's a pattern here. 12 games, 12 conceded. A 7.98 for a goalkeeper. It's insanity. <laughs> And, oh, eight games, 18 can see. So it definitely had a worse time last year. So there's, and for me, there's promise there. I think there's definitely promise that they're doing okay. When I go to the schedule, we're going to, so, okay. So we'll come back to 2023 so far, 2018. So two draws, both against Luxembourg, a 0-0 and a 1-1. And then defeats to Moldova and Belarus, but no more than two goals. So that's not awful. So they've scored, and they've scored two goals. They conceded eight there. Yes, I can count. Okay. 2019. They, they, they won! San Marino won a competitive football game. I think that's what, number two in their history? They beat Liechtenstein 1 0. So the keeper probably there. Let me see how he did. Uh, the keeper, oh, okay, I have to go in, nope, okay, we're not going to get to find out, full details are not available, but he was there, and he probably did good, because they won 1-0, had a 1-0 draw here, a 1-0 with Estonia, 4-0 against France isn't great, but that's kind of to be expected, only 2-0 here, so it's not awful, it's not terrible, so they have one win, four draws so far, and a bunch of defeats, 
beat Malta 3 0 at Friendly. They went, they went four games unbeaten. Five! From here, they went five games unbeaten, albeit four of them were friendlies, but they. Wow. Five unbeaten games. Then they had it's the bad time against Luxembourg, Albania, and Belarus. They kind of got ripped apart. And that draws again with Belarus and Albania, which is better, but they lost twice to Luxembourg. So that's not ideal. This is this is nice, though. I like that. So we've had two wins total, and a good number of draws now. They, they won twice! They beat the Faroe Islands home, and they beat Cyprus away, 1-0. I think the goalkeeper had a part to play in that. So a couple 1-0 wins there. Defeats all around. The party. Held Ukraine to a 0-0. Didn't concede more than three. I think that's pretty good. They would have... Oh, I was about to say if they had a striker, this would have been better. Let's hold off on that one. But two wins in this. I don't think I'll get the table anymore. Probably. I think that'll be far. Oh, maybe not. Let me see if I can... No. Okay, that's for the next next World Cup now. So I can't see the table anymore, but they, they might have snuck above like the Pharaohs or something, because they're pretty terrible. Maybe not. 2022, two back-to-back -back friendly wins against Andorra and Lithuania. They beat Malta in that one. They still didn't go up, but they got their first win in the International League, which is nice. A 1-0 at home to Malta. They lost to Kosovo and Belarus. A draw with Malta. They drew with Kosovo once. So that's not bad. Three wins in that year. And then, so far, Spain, Czech Republic, Austria, and Slovenia, predictably, I think, have been too powerful for them. That's not bad. That's not bad. That's honestly a little bit better than I was expecting. You, know, you I said I want the goalkeeper to be the winner here. That's better than I thought. He has a chance. It's time to check up on Perfect Striker. So before we do, though, 179. Okay, the 179th in the world after being 202. Okay. Yeah, we're going to look at the striker now. Alright, I'm going to just get right into it. San Marino, where are they? 196th. So world ranking wise, they are lower. That doesn't mean everything. But that's a good, what, 20 places shy of where they were with the goalkeeper. So perfect striker. He's still pretty good, isn't he? 37.5 million pounds, playing at Spurs, 122 games, 91 goals. 46 caps, 19 goals. So for San Marino, that's pretty great, but is 19 goals over that amount of time really going to make the difference? It would seem not. At the moment, although he seems like he scored in his first game, if that's at the same time. Let's have a quick look at his ratings and when he scored his goals. So Spurs, yeah, he's been an absolute machine. Of course he has. Here, internationally, let's say 10 games, 9 goals. So he got 9 of his, how many was it? 18? 19. He got 9 of his 19 goals in year 1. It doesn't bode well for the rest of them. So 10 games, 9 goals. 10 games, 5 goals. 8 games, no goals. So that was a poor year. 12 games, 5 goals. 6 games, no goals. Yeah, so it's very up and down at the moment. I don't think I have anything here now. Okay. So there's probably been a couple good years. Let's say he scored nine goals there, five a couple times. So he's, he's done okay, but it's okay enough. They're only 196th. I feel like the keeper might have been better, but we need to actually look at it. So similar story here, Slovakia, Hungary, Holland, Armenia have all beat them. Obviously the teams are going to be different. I can't control future draws of stuff, but... Go back to 2018. So, wow, okay. So they actually won three games in year one because of him. They scored nine goals here. So, how many? Five, six, seven. Sam Marino scored ten goals in the International League that first year. Perfect Strikers scored nine of them. So he definitely got them these wins. They beat Luxembourg twice and beat Moldova once. 1-0 without a goal. perfect goalkeeper. That's impressive. As you can see, four to Belarus. So I feel like the defense is going to be worse. Yeah, it was. It was Mr. Striker that did pretty much everything, wasn't it? Wait, did I count that wrong? Five, six, seven, ten. I thought he scored nine goals. Did he score ten? Or eight, sorry. That's possible, actually. 
I don't know. Whatever. There might have been other games this season, isn't it? Okay. Forget that. I don't know how to count. But they won three, so that's good. They might have been promoted there, actually. That would be kind of insane if they were. Move on. Ah. Yeah, so... 2019, when he did worse, I think he scored... Yeah, they lost every game in 2019. It was all European Championships, like qualifiers, and they lost every single one. Conceded six, five, four a couple times. So they're suffering without the man in the sticks. They had a great 2018, those three wins. They started off better, but this is unquestionably worse. Big defeats. Oh boy. What's next? So they had a draw with Andorra. They beat Azerbaijan in a friendly. They beat Malta here. Luxembourg, Estonia, Malta in that group. They had one win. But then, yeah, they didn't really do... I think, was this the year he didn't score any goals? Yeah, I think this was the year that he didn't score. Actually, maybe not. He scored three here. No, he scored twice. Oh my gosh. Excuse me. 2019, I don't think he scored. Okay, so one win. Sorry, two wins, two draws. That's not bad. Uh, yeah, and then 2022. Sorry, 2021. Only one draw was against Georgia, so it was competitive at least. But, yeah, the rest is kind of miserable. 5-0, 4-0, 3-0s. Okay, 2022. Two friendly wins against Liechtenstein and Gibraltar, but then a clean sweep of defeats to Malta, Armenia, and Luxembourg. And then Kosovo and North Macedonia beating them in friendlies as well. And then we saw this already. I think we have our conclusion, folks, and I'm definitely a little surprised, but not disappointed. So, to wrap up, I conclude scientifically unequivocally and without any doubt that if you are faced with a situation where you can buy an equally good goalkeeper or an equally good striker to replace your equally bad goalkeeper or striker for the same money you should pick the goalkeeper the goalkeeper will win you more points than the striker 100% facts I do this so you don't have to. This is science. Thank you very much for watching. Hit that like button if you liked it. Comment if you have something you'd like to add or you think I'm wrong. Hit that subscribe button for more random things like this. And I shall see you next time.